because I recognize that in a genuine peace, we'll be required to give up parts of the ancestral Jewish homeland. And you have to understand this. In Judea and Samaria, the Jewish people are not foreign occupiers. We're not the British in India. We're not the Belgians in the Congo. This is the land of our forefathers, the land of Israel, to which Abraham brought the idea of one God, where David set out to confront Goliath, and where Isaiah saw a vision of eternal peace. No distortion of history. And boy, am I reading a lot of distortions of history lately, old and new. No distortion of history could deny the 4,000-year-old bond between the Jewish people and the Jewish land. <laughs> but there is another truth. The Palestinians share this small land with us. We seek a peace in which there'll be neither Israel's subjects nor its citizens. They should enjoy a national life of dignity, is a free, viable, and independent people living in their own state. They should enjoy a prosperous economy where their creativity and initiative can flourish. Now we've already seen the beginnings of what is possible. In the last two years, the Palestinians have begun to build a better life for themselves. By the way, Prime Minister Fayyad has led this effort on their part and I, I wish him a speedy recovery from his uh, recent operation. We've helped on our side. We've helped the Palestinian economic growth by removing hundreds of barriers and roadblocks to the free flow of goods and people. And the, the results have been nothing short of remarkable. The Palestinian economy is booming. It's growing by more than 10% a year. And Palestinian cities, they look very different today than what they looked just a few, years, a few years ago. They have shopping malls, movie theaters, restaurants, banks. They even have e-businesses, but you can't see that when you visit them. That's what they have. It's a great change. And all of this is happening without peace. So imagine what could happen with peace. Peace would herald a new day for both our peoples, and it could also make the dream of a broader Arab-Israeli peace a realistic possibility. So now here's the question. You've got to ask it. If the benefits of peace with the Palestinians are so clear, why has peace eluded us? Because all six Israeli prime ministers since the signing of the Oslo Accords agreed to establish a Palestinian state, myself included. So why has peace not been achieved? Because so far the Palestinians have been unwilling to accept a Palestinian state if it meant accepting a Jewish state alongside it. You see, our conflict has never been about the establishment of a Palestinian state. 
It's always been about the existence of the Jewish state. This is what this conflict is about. In 1947, the, the UN voted to partition the land into a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jews said yes, the Palestinians said no. In recent years, the Palestinians twice refused generous offers by Israeli prime ministers to establish a Palestinian state on virtually all the territory won by Israel in the Six-Day War. They were simply unwilling to end the conflict. And I regret to say this. They continue to educate their children to hate. They continue to name public squares after terrorists. And worst of all, they continue to perpetuate the fantasy that Israel will one day be flooded by the descendants of Palestinian refugees. My friends, this must come to an end. President Abbas must do what I have done. I stood before my people, and I told you it wasn't easy for me. I stood before my people and I said, I will accept a Palestinian state. It's time for President Abbas to stand before his people and say, I will accept a Jewish state. Those six words will change history. They'll make it clear to the Palestinians that this conflict must come to an end, that they're not building a Palestinian state to continue the conflict with Israel, but to end it. And those six words will convince the people of Israel that they have a true partner for peace. With such a partner, the Palestinian, or rather the Israeli people, will be prepared to make a far-reaching compromise. I will be prepared to make a far-reaching compromise. <laughs> this compromise must reflect the dramatic demographic changes that have occurred since 1967. The vast majority of the 650,000 Israelis who live beyond the 1967 lines reside in neighborhoods and suburbs of Jerusalem and greater Tel Aviv. Now these areas are densely populated, <clears throat> but they're geographically quite small. And under any realistic peace agreement, these areas, as well as other places of critical, strategic, and national importance, will be incorporated into the final borders of Israel. The status of the settlements will be decided only in negotiations. But we must also be honest. So I'm saying today something that should be said publicly by all those who are serious about peace. In any real peace agreement, in any peace agreement that ends the conflict, some settlements will end up beyond Israel's borders. Now the precise delineation of those borders must be negotiated will be generous about the size of the future Palestinian state. But as President Obama said, 
The border will be different than the one that existed on June 4th, 1967. Israel will not return to the indefensible boundaries of 1967. So I want to be very clear on this point. Israel will be generous on the size of the Palestinian state, but will be very firm on where we put the border with it. This is an important principle. It shouldn't be lost. We recognize that a Palestinian state must be big enough to be viable, to be independent, to be prosperous. All of you, and I, the President too, have referred to Israel as the homeland of the Jewish people. Just as you've been talking about a future Palestinian state is the homeland of the Palestinian people. Well, Jews from around the world have a right to immigrate to the one and only Jewish state. And Palestinians from the around, around the world should have a right to immigrate, if they so choose, to a Palestinian state. And here's what this means. It means that the Palestinian refugee problem will be resolved outside the borders of Israel.